Okay, Vinny. So um, thanks for taking the time to, sure. to speak about this. Um, now you've just published your book, Employees First, Customer Second, um, and it seems that a, a lot of the the philosophy behind the book is around trust and transparency. So really having that sense of trust in your your staff, and clearly you've got tens of thousands of staff. So so maybe could you explain just the sort of basic philosophy first then? So the basic philosophy is that. Uh, we fundamentally asked ourselves a question as to what business are we in? And the answer to that question is to create value which is differentiated for our customers, differentiated compared to our competitors. The second question we asked is where is this value getting created? And the answer to that question is in the interface between the employees and the customers, which we call the value zone. The third question we ask is who is creating this value? And the obvious answer is the employees in that interface. And then the fourth final fundamental question we need to ask ourselves is, if that is true, then what should the business of management be? What business should the management be in? And the answer to that is in the business of encouraging, enthusing, enabling the employees to create the value in the interface with the customer so that you can deliver differentiated value so that you can outperform and outgrow your competitor. So it is about growth. It is not about love for employees. It is a strategy where how you run your company could be the core differentiation compared to what you do, right? And we have seen Southwest Airlines do that. We've seen Starbucks, Gore. We've seen Google do that. We've seen Apple do that. And therefore, if management is to be in the business of enabling and choosing the employees, then what is wrong with saying it in the way it is, which is employees first, that is my core business, customer second because that will lead if employees are first then the customer will automatically be first but if customers are first then all I focus on is relationships and golfing and tournaments and all that stuff and employees are come behind me then you know customers will never come first and you will never grow so that's the basic philosophy behind employees first customer second okay and um in India, over the past decade, the IT services industry has, has grown at a phenomenal rate. So, uh, I mean, many commentators have observed that firms such as yours ha have almost become uh, experts at human resources uh, as well as IT because of the massive um, rate in growth. So, so is this something to do with your industry and the time that you're working in, or is this is this a universal truth? So, first is. Uh you know, the employee centricity and the way we are doing it is not is only with HCL, right? Uh, the problem with the Indian IT industry, which I have expressed in, in my book, is that we see our business to be this engine which is extremely good in hiring fresh engineers, training them, and then deploying them to the project. So it is human capital investment. But as the business becomes more challenged on value creation, our business model is also struggling to cope with it. So I believe that the implementation of this model is more seen in US and Europe. Virgin out here, right? It's a fantastic way that he has waved in employees as his core differentiation. Now he's waving in society, which is his sustainability initiative, as his core differentiation, rather than product and price. Same is true with a lot of other companies I talked about. And I think HCL's journey in this is at complete departure to the rest of the Indian IT because we were behind the rest of the Indian IT. And the only way we can bypass the rest of the Indian IT, who are focusing on quality and fresher and efficiency and you know on those aspects, was actually to bypass them on thinking on a completely different dimension. Mm -hmm. Because you can't compete on something which they do better than you. You can compete because you can only at, at best get as good as them. But you can compete by creating a completely new dimension where they have not even started investment and therefore that becomes your competitive differentiation, which is what we did. Right, and and uh, over the past few years, I mean, certainly the past three years or so, there's been quite a severe economic downturn in most of the developed markets, and most of your your direct rivals either cut hiring completely or, or even laid people off, and yet I think uh, you, you continue to grow your your employees during this period. So, so is this philosophy behind your ability to do that? I think till 2008, we were not very clear whether the strategy is working or the market momentum is working or our philosophy is working. 
when recession came in in July 2008, we very clearly declared after huge amount of participated discussion in our company that recession is an opportunity, not a threat. And we put certainty in the minds of the employees rather than uncertainty. This is at the time we did not know how long it will last and we did not know how bad it will become. But we said we will stay honest to this, which is not the way a lot of other companies, including Indian companies, dealt with it. The fact that we grew 20% year on year during recession, which is calendar 09 over calendar 08, can only be attributed of the fact that our employees in the value zone felt positive, empowered, certain. The, the employees of our competitors felt uncertain, negative, and therefore brought negative energy to the value zone because they did not know when go, they go back what happens to their company and themselves. And I think that shifted the balance of power in recession, where customers saw these bunch of guys were extremely motivated and positive. Even when the customer's budget were coming down, they moved their business away from our competitors and gave it to us. That is the only logic why we would grow. I can't come up with any other logic. So there is no, there is only anecdotal proof that the differentiation around the employee in recession was the cause for us to outperform all our competitors. Mm. And um, I mean, I suppose then one of the problems uh, that a lot of chief executives have then is that uh, many of the different uh, management philosophies often uh, only have anecdotes to, to support them. There's not sort of very deep um, academic learning, for example. So, so how do you, do you think that the, the philosophy you've outlined here and to, to focus on the employees first, is, is that supported by, by academic evidence or um, examples rather than, than anecdotes? So it's, it's a very interesting question and thank you for asking me because I'd like to put this answer on record. So when you get into a new product or a new service or a new geography, is there an anecdotal evidence of the fact that the strategy will succeed? When you create a new iPhone or you launch a new product, what anecdotal evidence do you have that this is going to be a competitive strength? You go by the logic and let me explain the logic to you. The logic is the growth is going to come out of emerging markets. Everybody knows it because of billions of people there. Okay. That can only come because if you innovate on new product, new services at different price point. So price value per price point is going to be dramatically different than it, what it was. Okay, that's the second one. Third is, who's going to create this innovation? It is going to be employees in the emerging markets, like Whirlpool, like GE, like Unilever. It's those employees who are going to create, the, create which is culturally very diverse, which is... Uh, demographically wise, wise very different to, to what you are. Okay, so if employees are going to create it and your dependence is on employees. Now the last question is, is the trust between you and employees increased or decreased in the last two years? The answer is it has decreased. So the final question is what are you going to do about it? So we can intellectually debate whether this is the most important thing for, for you or to do or not, but I believe you stand, most of us are standing on the ledge of a building which is on fire because the trust between us and our employees is not there. Now that I still is acceptable, right? It, it's fine, it doesn't, trust is not there, you know, go take a jump. However, if they are the people who are gonna deliver the innovation for you to grow, because your growth is not coming from existing products and services, but new products and services which are relevant for emerging markets, then you better fix it. Mm. Now all I'm saying is, you fix it. Now whether you fix it in the fashion which I am giving, which I'm not saying that it is applicable to everybody in every way, but I, I'm just saying it's an experiment which is out there which should make you think about how you build the trust bank with your employees. Once you do that, innovation will flow, energy will flow, growth will flow, everything will flow, and and you know you will start growing again. Now whether you believe it or not, that you can't dispute the logic. 